Bend the knee. Dalamo Golas, everybody. This is Don Willie back again for another edition of Epic, Epic Battles, Battles of Ice, of Ice and Fire. Fire. And today I am back here in Essos to bring you another contest where science meets magic. And you know what? Without any further ado, let's get right to it. So in this corner here, we have the famed 13th Lord Commander of the Night's Watch who eventually went on to possibly lead the White Walkers. And even though George says that he is probably not survived the Age of Heroes, there are many who think he's still around. And he is actually depicted in some form in the HBO television series. He is shown to have great magical powers and properties. And man, oh man, it's going to be interesting to see what he does throughout season six of the show and beyond, and whether or not we will actually see him in the books. So without any further ado, we have the Night's King versus in this corner here, a powerful behemoth, a miracle of genetic engineering to a certain extent you know if you believe uh what some people have to say about breeding in the seven kingdoms and he was once you know a knight of house lannister and man a very ferocious human being and now he happens to be kind of an undead uh you know monster to a certain extent, you know, recreated by Kyburn. And so we're still not sure exactly what the full extent of what his abilities are, but we do know that this is science that brought him back and not magic. So we have a current member of the Kingsguard awaiting to fight Cersei's trial by combat, and that is Sir Robert Strong. So for this one, I happen to get the guy who everyone knows is the aficionado on the Night's King himself. So get your glasses ready and drink, drink, drink. Yeah, we got my man James Johnson on the set. So James, take it away. The Night's King. We don't really know what he is or what he's capable of. So let's check off one thing we know. We know he can skin change. We don't know that for a fact, but it looks like he can. He can at least skin change the dead. He can necromance. So he's got an army of undead. But I don't think it's fair for it to be a battle with his entire army. So, and because arguably the mountain has his own little army, the, the King's Guard. So for now, I think we'll just stick with the Knight's King. He's also got the White Walkers, the same difference. So in order to figure out what his strengths and weaknesses are, you really have to ask, what is the Knight's King? I think that undoubtedly he is a white. I say undoubtedly, I don't mean that we have proof for it. I just mean that in my opinion, undoubtedly he is a white. And I say that because in my opinion, he was he died and was brought back to life, similarly to what we're gonna see with John, like Beric Dondarrion, but he brought himself back and he had his mind preserved in something else when he did it. I think it was on child, but it's not irrelevant to this conversation. So the point is he can bring himself back to life as long as his consciousness can survive elsewhere. Um, so we're gonna remove that. I think the question is whether uh, Night's King can be killed, uh, or whether Robert Strong can kill the Night's King. So can he be killed? Well, if he's a white, then fire will do it. We don't know if Valyrian steel or dragon glass will do it, but um, I think that fire and Valyrian steel are the main two things. And even if he is a white, full-fledged, um, if you destroy his body with a sword, I mean, we saw people in hard home arguably killing whites, whatever that meant, um, without fire. So it at least immobilized them. And that's enough, I think that's sufficient. So the Night's King's power, um, he can skin change. He can resist all elements except for fire. Um, and I think there's an argument that he also has the White Walker disease. And if he had whatever the thing that makes the White Walkers what they are. If he also has that, then he might also be invulnerable to fire. Valyrian Steel and Dragonglass, we don't know if they can kill a White. Um, so let's, I think I could presume they do not, since fire is the main thing we use. I think that Robert Strong's main strength here is that he has a will and nothing else. So the question is whether the Night's King can supplant that, take it over. 
I'm not sure he can. Because he can't just take over anybody or else this would be that simple. He'd just walk by and go, you're mine, you're mine, you're mine, you're mine, you're mine. It's death and then resurrection. And that may be especially true with Robert Strong since he's just a will. Um, well, actually, he doesn't even have that. He's told what to do. So the strength of the Night's King here is that he can resurrect himself, that he's in seemingly invulnerable to anything uh, that we know of, although he may be Valyrian steel um, and fire. So... I think the Knights King would win this, and the only reason I say the Knights King would win this is because he is undead. So is the Mountain, as far as I'm concerned, undead, but the Knights King has a conscious will and can resurrect himself, but can basically be more in control of the situation. He can have calculated moves where he hides behind things and moves some The Mountain, to me, is just a full-fledged force. He's just brute force. He keeps swinging until something's dead, whereas the Night's King can be calculated about it. Uh, there's also the other aspects, the skin changing and the fact that he's difficult to kill in the first place, and he can resurrect himself. Sir Robert Strong, we know he is the quasi-dead, reanimated corpse of the Mountain. I mean, we're not sure exactly the full extent of what he is, but unlike the Night's King, he is not a magical being. He was a scientific being brought back by a former maester and now small council member, Kyburn. We know that he happens to have a great deal of physical strength. We know that he, for the most part, is a soldier. And we know that killing him might be a very tricky concept. I mean, we saw that he was poisoned by Oberyn Martell when he was Sir Gregor Clegane, and while that did incapacitate him greatly and almost kill him, it didn't exactly kill him. So we don't know uh, what his weakness is as far as that particular realm are, but I would imagine that Seeing as how he is fighting against someone who does not use conventional weapons, who has manipulation of ice, uh, and also is resistant to regular steel attacks, that Robert Strong's biggest disadvantage is the fact that he does not have a Valyrian steel blade, does not have any dragon glass, and could possibly have a disadvantage to the cold and we already know when the white walkers come the cold comes with them so we'll have to see what happens when science faces magic and these two warriors collide so mr james johnson why do you think it is that the knight's king would be able to defeat sir robert strong well, the Night's King may be able to get inside Robert Strong's head, and if that's the case, uh, and it may be that because he has no consciousness, that it may be easy for him to take over, like Bran had it easier with Hodor than he had with other uh, creatures, and Hodor arguably has more consciousness than Robert Strong. That said, it may be impossible for him to because Robert Strong is just the shell and arguably already has something in there. So the reason I think the Knights King might win has more to do with the Knights King, A, being invincible and immortal, and B, that there's almost nothing as far as we can know that can kill him. And even if there is something that will kill him, we don't know what it is. So to have Robert Strong fight the Knights King, we couldn't even prepare Robert Strong for that battle. Here's the weapon you need to use. But I, I like the idea of Robert Strong having the right weapon and it being more about who has the right skill. Arguably, the Night's King can read the mind of Robert Strong and tell what moves he's about to make. I like to think that John and the Night's King are meant to be comparable in their becoming Lord Commander because of their capabilities as a leader and as a friend and as a loyal person, but also I think possibly because of his fighting. You have to be a good fighter. Jor was a good fighter. John's a good fighter. So I think he's probably pretty damn good at fighting. I'd equate him with John. Okay. Well, I mean, look, you know what? At the end of the day, we know the Night's King has an immense amount of magical power, and Robert Strong, as far as we know, does not have any actual magical abilities. That being said, even if he doesn't have a Valyrian steel blade or, you know, whatever may have you, 
Yeah, look, I, I doubt that the Night's King would be able to actually take over his mind. And I mean, because, like, what is he going to do to him if he does take over his mind? Is he going to make him commit suicide or something? You know, so, uh, yeah, I, listen, I, I just think that, you know, if it came down to a one-on-one battle, the Night's King versus Robert Strong, let's say, you know, he does use his ice blade to shatter his sword or or whatever may have you, you know, the same way how John had problems with that white that uh, first showed up at Castle Black, I think the Night's King might have similar problems with someone like Robert Strong because here you have a creature that is basically uh, going off of nothing but instinct. And, and, you know, and like, how can you read the mind or the moves of something that is going purely off of instinct and is not consciously thinking about, well, what is it that, like, what are going to be my moves? Am I going to parry? Am I going to thrust block, et cetera, et cetera? You know, so even if Robert Strong loses his sword, gets stabbed, and a whole bunch of other stuff, I still think, you know, Nice King might have a great problem on his hands you know just with uh this behemoth of a man who it's like all right well yeah this stuff might have stopped other people but he's not you know just your regular run-of-the-mill person so it, it you know even though you would think the nice king should be able to probably win this one easily he might actually have a tougher fight on his hands than you would expect. Also, as far as we can tell, and we have no idea yet in the books, if you stab Robert Strong, I don't think he's going down. He almost wouldn't have as a man, he didn't, as a living man. But as an undead, he he might, he's not undead necessarily. I love what you said about it being a scientific thing, by the way, scientific resurrection. Um, if the Knights King and Robert Strong can't go down be based on being stabbed by anything, Valyrian steel, dragon glass, uh, whatever, then their swords are kind of irrelevant. It may come down to hand to hand, and if it comes ha down hand to hand, how can the Knights King hurt Robert Strong? I have a feeling that Robert Strong can be killed. If you cut Robert Strong's head off, I think he's down. If the Knights King could cut Robert Strong's head off, I think Robert Strong would go down. Can the Knights King do it? I think that his special kind of blade would eat right into armor. I may be wrong, but the ice blades are going to go right through armor. So all he needs is one good swing. And hey, he's got kind of a similar weapon to what Quentin used. He's got a long spear axe looking thing. A lot of people thought it was a horn, so did I. But hanging from his back, long spear axe sort of thing. I think he, uh, it might even destroy, with the exception of Valyrian Steel, destroy the weapon. And then if he touches him at all, he's cutting through. Night's King may win this. If swords matter. Now, when it comes down to who will win, without a doubt, the Knights King wins. And here's why. He can resurrect himself. He has an army behind him that don't question a thing he does uh, that could almost take down a giant, certainly could take down the mountain, at least by number. Not to mention the White Walkers, who arguably can't be killed by whatever weapon he's going to use unless it's Valyrian Steel. Even if you give him Valyrian Steel, I don't think the Knights King can be killed by Valyrian Steel. I don't think he can be killed by Dragonglass because he's a white. I don't think he could be killed by Fire because he's a White Walker. I don't think he could be killed by any regular sword because he's a white. I don't even think Valyrian Steel might do it, and I think that's the point of the sword Dawn. So unless Robert Strong has Dawn in his hand, and unless Robert Strong has him one-on-one, -on -one, and all of this is discounting the fact that, in my opinion, the Night's King can take over his body. I think it's arguable that he can. We don't have any proof of that. But as far as I'm concerned, if you don't have a will, you're fair game. Now, he has a will, but his will is to do the will of what whoever uh, tells him what to do. Kyber's doing it. It's going to be Cersei later. That's exactly, in my opinion, what's going to happen to John. I'm getting sidetracked. That's exactly, in my opinion, what's going to happen to John. He gets resurrected, but his mind's still in ghosts, so his mind's... His body's be doing whatever he's told. In my opinion, that's the perfect thing for the Night's King to take over. And if he can't take him over directly, he kills the person that instructs him and takes them over. Okay, so, you know what? I, I do think that you have definitely convinced me. I mean, look, in, for all of Robert Strong's physical prowess, yes, he is an empty shell. 
he is someone that you know probably would be able to be taken over by someone like the Night's King and as much as I love science it looks like magic wins the day on this one so in the battle of the Night's King versus Robert Strong the winner and soon to be ruler of the earth if he has his way is the Night's King Brandon Stark <laughs> All right, so for this one, look, come on. As much as it would have been a pretty interesting contest, you know, we get to see someone who has absolutely no magical abilities versus someone who seems to display a wide range of magical abilities. I mean, you'd have to give it to the Night's King just based off of what we've seen in the show and possible... Uh, possible things that we've seen in the books from other white walkers but you know you guys let me know who you think would have won and again thank you to james johnson from james of thrones for joining me in this particular one because i'm on it's the night's king right and i will be back again next week with another one of these and you guys already know the deal rate comment subscribe share Tell your friends, come back for more. That's been my time. And this is Don Willie saying, Valadiris. Yeah.